for our study today. We have chosen to talk about a dictation that was given by the mother of the world. It was recorded in volume 25, number 32. But before we start that, I would like to share a little bit of, from Lanello and Mother about the mother of the world. Lanello says, let this planet then come to the understanding of the great Shekinah glory, the great living presence of the Divine Mother that does shine forth from the I am that I am above you. You abide in feminine being and cosmos. You are nurtured and suckled by the Blessed One. You are that mother in manifestation. Let all the world know the great meaning of mother as you manifest the great qualities of fierceness determination, uncompromising stand for truth, being consumed by the zeal of your Lord, the full power, wisdom, and love of the Trinity, being consumed by the fire of God and consuming with it all that is unlike God. <clears throat> He says, may you truly understand and be the embodiment of Sarasvata, of Lakshmi, Durga, of Kali, and Paravati, of Sita, and of all those great divine beings who are the epitome of the beloved Vesta, the beloved Omega. Let the fire of the great desiring of God as mother burn in the solar plexus. The mother will come to you to resolve all schism in the four lower bodies, in the soul and in the spirit. Be the mother beloved and know that that mother flame in you, adored, obeyed, deferred to all at all times, is the key to the ascension flame. For the ascension flame is the consummate manifestation of mother. And then our beloved Jesus, in another dictation, said it this way, O mother of the world, I am come. I am fulfilling light and I am the fulfillment of my promise unto thee and thine own gathered here in the tabernacle of the congregation. Beloved of the light of God, I welcome you as brothers and sisters of holy flame. Yes, brothers and sisters of the flame of God. This means that I hold thee in kinship with God, God the Father and God the Mother with us. For the universal mother and her light of old, known as the Shekinah glory, is the presence of God in this universe, in this manifestation, Therefore, behold her universal light in Mary the Mother, in nature, through the Holy Spirit in thy heart, and in thy messenger. Beloved, you have heard it said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now understand how universal 
all pervading through and through thy very bones is the person of the universal mother. Understand how it is thy glory, thy discipleship to be one with this mother. The persecution of the believers in my mother, Mary, is in reality an outpicturing of the deep cleavage in the subconscious, a psychological state that has been called by beloved Kathumi the hatred of the mother. Sad it is that earthly mothers have sometimes quickened in their offspring this hatred of the mother by their example, which is wanting, wanting of the flow and the light of the universal mother. Understand how the ancients knew that the consciousness of mother, the womb of mother, was the matrix alchemical of that light. Thus you see the immaculate heart of Mary, I mean, the immaculate heart of mother in both male and female representatives of herself must be held. For this indeed is the womb of creation where you abide, <clears throat> where each one is becoming Christ, being formed and reformed in that Christ. Understand, beloved, that each one has the Dharma, truly the duty in the understanding of universal Buddha to be the mother on earth, holding firmly and with strength and devotion and vision and faith, the understanding of each one's potential and its fulfillment. <clears throat> Thus, when the mother flame is kept, life does prosper. For children are comforted. Souls know the solace of love directly through your heart. And when the crystal vision of each one's ultimate godhood is known and loved, even as one loves the soul becoming the real self, then the love of mother is kindled. And this love does consume and transmute the records in the subconscious of this which we have called hatred of the mother. <clears throat> this denial of mother's grace divides the individual it divides Christendom. It divides the followers of all the world's religion. It is the cause of the slaying of the firstborn in the hour of my birth and abortion in this hour. It is the cause of a division in families and divorce in the mistreatment of children and the misuse of the sacred fire. And therefore, having hated the mother, the light is squandered. Those who therefore deny the light of the mother on earth before holy angels must receive the compensation of those holy angels denying them before the godhood, Godhead. Denying what? Denying their access to greater light and divinity and the onward path of initiation. Thus the holy angels must say of such a soul, thus far and no further. They shall not pass into the realm of the Father or of the Son of the or of the Holy Spirit or of the living guru. Lord Maitreya, <clears throat> I come then in the joyous thanksgiving of the grace of our Father 
to admonish the sons and daughters of heaven, taking up their abode on earth. Make peace with thy mother, even as thou wouldst be one with the father. <clears throat> the mother in the earth is the best part of thyself. By the mother flame, all avatars have come. For when thou speakest of the word incarnate as in me, understand that that word is the mother flame. And so with this background of both Lanello and Jesus, let us go into the teachings of the mother of the world. <clears throat> he says, she says, where shall I strive, O God? Through the heart of the sun? For the heart of the sun I strive in the mother flame, and I seek to save that which is lost. Do bring it into the fullness of the definition of Christ, for the heart of the sun, by the heart of the sun. <clears throat> Now, when she's talking about son here, she's talking about offspring, both male and female. She's therefore, I come in the mother light to rekindle a world, to send forth the call, to bring back the, funda the fragmented parts into the point of the wholeness of the soul. I would give eyes to the blind, speech to the dumb, the fullness of heart to those who have lost their hearts. I would give the gentle touch to those whose hands have waxed insensitive to the gentle touch of the child. I would give the fullness, measure for measure, as ye are able to receive it, of that portion of the nectar of love that is between the mother and the son. For Christ Jesus I came, and that to give him birth. Beloved hearts, to give him birth I must, I did sustain and support the whole world and the material creation. For he could not come into the darkness of a vacuum, but he must come to those, though maimed, though absent in part from the point of awareness that yearned and would look for him and know enough of him, because they were of him, to receive him and to attend the hour of their own birth from darkness unto light. <clears throat> I, the mother ray, sent from God to go forth and pursue that which was lost through turning away from the great resplendent light. <clears throat> I also, with the Father, framed the universes I was there for the creation of the visible worlds, that they might see him and know him and know how much the Father has loved him. Even the very fallen ones that pace up and down in the plane of the mind. Before these very ones, he must appear. <clears throat> I, the mother, must go before him. I must keep the flame. I must prepare the place. I must be there when he is born helpless into the world as God in him would be helpless until the hour of the ripening of the sun, the small s, unto the sun, big, 
capitalist things and the full maturity of one cent. <clears throat> Therefore, unto the hour of his anointing, I come. And I stay and I tarry till the hour of the fulfillment of his life and his glory. I am the mother flame, the mother ray. You have known me in many forms, in each hour when the hour of the mother is come, in each day when the day of the mother appears. It is for one reason and that alone, to give birth to the only begotten Son of God, that through him the world might return to light and to the brightness of being. And those who have rebelled against the Father and the Son, who will see outplayed as the drama of the ages before their very eyes, this, this love of the Mother and the Son, the Son who is caught up into the Father and is literally sustained in life by the love of heaven and of earth. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Therefore, ye children of the light, therefore, ye children of men, hearken then, for you have prepared the table of the mother in the very presence of the enemies, the very fallen ones. God has not brought them to their judgment for he desires that they should know how much I have loved the Son and how much the Father has loved me and the Son through me. Therefore, beloved, in order that the consciousness of the liar and the murderer from the beginning might see the utter failure and fruitlessness of their evil work, they must see the glory and the triumph of the light in the earth, in the visible, tang tangible creation, in the realm of the bottomless pit, in the astral plane, in the mental plane. Everywhere where the mother goes, there is the sun born. And he is born then by angels aloft. And he is carried to the seven plains. And his mind computes with the mind of God. And therefore, it is known that the victory is won, that it shall be won. <clears throat> and the hour of the ascension of the Son of God is the hour of the judgment. <clears throat> that there be no record left, whether in the memory of the darkest of the dark ones, that in any age and time and space, any effort ever made by arch deceivers has ever been able to tear from the mother, the blessed son, or from the son, the mother, as we therefore descended together, so we ascend together. And with the ascension of the mother and the son is the great in-breath of the Almighty. And the worlds return to the original fount and to his throne. And there is nothing more that is manifest beneath the throne of the Son of God. And the Son, behind the Son, the I am that I am, is above the throne as the Shekinah glory, the guardian of the light, the fulfillment of the old, old story of the invincible love of Alpha unto Omega, of Omega unto Alpha, 
of the fire descending into the water and the water penetrating fire and the twain are one and the return to the Tai Chi of the story that was undone and now is done. Rejoice, therefore, ye heavens. Rejoice, O earth, that I am come into the very heart of hearts of the sun, the living savior. And therefore, in the name of Sana Kumaro, is the hour of the fulfillment come and the sign unto all children of the light that the return, the return even by the pathway of Seth shall be and is in the hour of the ordination of that which, is, which was and is and is to come. Therefore, let the blessed heart as above so below, rise to the fulfillment of the resurrection spiral. For that heart, that heart, that flaming heart that is one with other spheres is the power of the only begotten Son to magnetize the worlds unto their fulfillment. Celebrate then the return of the worlds to the origin. Celebrate the going forth of the light. Celebrate the captivating of the darkness by the light until it is no more. O oh, blessed children of the heart of the mother, the universal one, celebrate then this day that the mother and the son are come unto thee. <clears throat> I am by the flame of Mother Mary, the fulfillment of the Mother Ray in your midst. Let it be for the dissolving of the world of the Nephilim and the culmination of the sealing of battle victorious. Let this light be then for the putting to naught of all that is torn down the children of the sun, all that has torn down the children of the sun. Bind then the oppressors of my youth, of my children, and even those who would assail the holy of holies of the Christ in these little ones. All of this is bound because I love, as the I is the presence in you of life, the I that is the manifestation of the divine Shakti, the feminine aspect of God. Therefore, the loving of the single point of the heart of the sun is the reason for the being of the mother and the sustainment and the statement, yeah, that's the sustainment of her flame in the universes, the universes of matter, worlds beyond worlds. As you contemplate the reason for being of the mother, precious hearts, contemplate your own reason for being your own first primordial love go to that love and therefore withstand all the world and its enmity with god and know it cannot prevail in you or near you so long as you love as the mother loves the sun. In her name I come, and I see you, you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, we have heard from Lanello. We have heard from Jesus. We have heard from the mother of the world. 
concerning Mother's Day, the mother flame being the mother. And I would ask Jesus to finish bringing this thought into its focus when he says in his teaching from the lost teachings of Jesus, at this juncture, an old woman who had approached the group, the better to hear Esau, was pushed aside by one of the spies who placed himself before her. Then Esau held forth. It is not meet that a son should set aside his mother, taking her place. Whosoever respecteth not his mother, the most sacred being after his God, is unworthy of the name of son. Listen to what I say unto you. Respect woman, for she is the mother of the universe and all the truth of divine creation lies in her. She is the basis of all that is good and beautiful, as she is also the germ of life and death. On her depends the whole existence of man, for she is his natural and moral support. She gives birth to you in the midst of suffering. By the sweat of her brow, she rears you. And until her death, you cause her the gravest anxieties. Bless her and worship her, for she is your friend, your one support on earth. Respect her. Uphold her. In acting thus, you will win her love and your heart and her heart. You will find favor in the sight of God, and many sins shall be forgiven you. In this way, love your wives and respect them, for they will be mothers tomorrow. And each later on, the, uh, the ancestress of the race. Be lenient toward woman. Her love enables man, softens his hardened heart, tames the brute in him, and makes of him a lamb. The wife and the mother are the inappreciable treasures given unto you by God. They are the fairest ornaments of existence, and of them shall be born all the inhabitants of the world. Even as the God of armies separated of old the light from the darkness and the land from the waters, Woman possesses the divine faculty of separating in a man good intentions from evil thoughts. Wherefore, I say unto you, after God, your best thoughts should belong to the woman and to wives. Woman being for you the temple wherein you will obtain the most easily perfect happiness. Imbue yourselves in this temple with moral strength. Here you will forget your sorrows and your failures, and you will recover the lost energy necessary to enable you to help your neighbor do not expose her to humiliation. In acting thus, you would humiliate yourselves and lose the sentiment of love without which nothing exists below. Protect your wife. 
in order that she may protect you and all your family. All that you do for your wife, your mother, for a widow or another woman in distress, you will have done unto your God. May God bless us this day as we again become aware of our divinity, of our own expression of feminine reality. In the name of Almighty God, we give thanks to our beloved Jesus, our beloved mother of the world, and our beloved Lanello. May this precious moment raise us into the very essence of the presence of God. And when we be and may we become the perfection of divine reality, the divine mother in manifestation unto all people. For we do ask it in his holy name, beloved Jesus.